Hey everyone, thanks for coming back. In this video, I'll continue to dig into the weeds of the recent update from NASA on the program planning and preparations for upcoming Artemis missions to the moon. This is the next episode on the update from NASA exploration leadership to one of the oversight panels they report to a few times every year. In the last one, I went through their update on Artemis II, and if you're interested in that, there's a link to that in the upper right. In this episode, I'll go through what was discussed about the work to get ready for the Artemis 3 and 4 missions. NASA leadership in the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, ESDMD for short, made public presentations to the NASA Advisory Council Human Exploration and Operations Committee on Friday, April 26th. Catherine Kerner, the Associate Administrator of ESDMD, and Amit Shatriya, Deputy Associate Administrator of the Moon to Mars Program Office under ESDMD provided technical updates on the Artemis program's work and the status of planning and preparations for the next Artemis missions. The HEO Committee of the NASA Advisory Council typically meets in a public forum three times a year, and the technical nature of the briefings is a big reason why they are valuable. So now moving from the last video on Artemis 2 to the status of Artemis 3 here, most of the updated information on status was on the slide itself. The Orion crew module is in various phases of outfitting or integration. You can see those on the slide. They are installing hardware for some subsystems, wire harnesses and ducting for others. I would infer from the notes that fluid tubing installations and proof testing of those welds are complete or mostly complete. Similarly, given that wire harness installations and routing are in work on the crew module adapter, I would infer that tube installation and welding is complete and the CMA is progressing through its standalone integration. Once that's complete, the CMA will be stacked on top of the European service module. A schedule update was provided for ESM3. Quote unquote, last minute integration issues were mentioned and delivery slipped another quarter. ESM-3 is now projected to be on dock at Kennedy Space Center in the July time frame. We did get a milestone update from Airbus early on May 7th while I was putting this together, showing a steering slash thrust vector control check of the orbital maneuvering system engine installed in ESM-3. So this is an indicator that Airbus is progressing through integrated testing, but that there is still some work to do and fits with this update in the delivery date from April to July. The nozzle for the engine will be temp installed during final integrated testing in Bremen, but will be removed for transportation and installed for flight at KSC well down the road of milestones. The CMA and ESM together form the Orion service module, and once those are mated, that will progress towards initial power on. But the schedule for the IPO of the service module and the crew module are unknown, at least in public. The production news for SLS with respect to Artemis 3 was about VAB High Bay 2. You can see on the slide it says that vertical tooling installation has started. I went over in more detail what information was public knowledge about the status of Artemis 2, 3, and 4 about a month ago, including specifically what is public about the status of Artemis 3 SLS production. I'll put a link to that in the upper right in case you're interested in more background. But there wasn't much updated beyond that in this briefing. The bottom line on that is that the SRB motor segments and the ICPS for Artemis 3 are mostly ready and waiting, although I'll have something else to add about ICPS, and the connecting adapters should be done this year. That will leave Core Stage 3 as the remaining incomplete element by the end of this year. There was a little confusion about ICPS 3. The status reports have said that the unit is in the Delta Operations Center in the vertical test cell where the stages are configured for stacking with SLS. The stages are outfitted with their avionics and the nozzle extension device for the version of the RL-10 that flies on ICPS and used to fly with the now retired Delta IV launch vehicle. The stage goes through a series of checkouts after that to verify it is ready for stacking and handover to exploration ground systems. Although the status reports place the stage in a vertical cell in the dock, family day at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station was a day after this briefing on Saturday, April 27th. And there are pictures said to be from that showing ICPS-3 in the HIF, the Horizontal Integration Facility. 
It won't have any impact on the Artemis 3 schedule, but I asked NASA Public Affairs about that discrepancy, and the SLS program confirmed that ICPS-3 is in the HIF, but that all nominal processing and testing was complete. For Core Stage 3, there wasn't any update provided about production beyond what we heard over a half year ago. Basically, the core is about halfway finished. It's unclear what impacts the recently announced cuts to SLS generally and the Boeing production workforce specifically will have on the core stage three delivery dates. The 2025 target date for delivery shown on the slide is vague, kind of like the Starship prop transfer demo target date. The presentations did include a few new images that I went over in detail in a recent video. The pictures in the presentations are not time-stamped, but we did get a previously unseen view of the top of the engine section of Core Stage 3, and thanks again to NASA Public Affairs, a higher-res view of that was provided. A link to that recent video is in the upper right if you're interested. Again, it's not clear what effect the Artemis 3 delay announced in January, and then the SLS workforce reductions that are starting now are having on production and delivery schedules. The completion and delivery dates for this stage were already a long-term watch item, and hopefully there will be more details on production status later in the year. There wasn't much said about the status of the Lunar Surface EVA spacesuits being developed by Axiom. Development is through the preliminary design review, but there is no forward milestone schedule in public. A lot of the time talking about Artemis 3 was spent on a presentation of the Starship propellant transfer demonstration test, since the committee had asked for more information in the previous meeting last November. As a quickish aside, I would guess everyone already knows this, but just in case, for even more on Starship news and progress, check out the NASA Spaceflight channel. They are streaming live views from Starbase and reporting on those activities daily. More specific to this presentation, Mr. Shatria outlined some of the prerequisite flight data like propellant slosh dynamics, ullage maintenance, and settling thrust behavior that will be needed before being ready to fly that first test flight dedicated to the prop transfer demo. He also noted some of the other changes above and beyond the things we've heard from SpaceX about the block upgrades. Not just stretching the length of the vehicle, but measures for the long-term endurance of the spacecraft in orbit, passive cryogenic fluid management measures like vacuum jacketing the propellant lines to reduce boil-off rates, for example. In addition to a rendezvous approach and docking graphic provided by SpaceX to NASA, he noted that the test would include a quote-unquote classic V-bar approach, where during the final approach, the Chaser spacecraft flies up in front of the target on the velocity vector and then closes the remaining distance for docking. The target starship would launch three to four weeks prior to the Chaser starship. Previous high-level milestone outlines showed a long-duration flight test, and tests like that will be needed to gather all the data to answer the quote-unquote how many tankers question that comes up when talking about Starship HLS and Artemis III. That came up a little bit in the discussion, and long-term endurance on orbit for the Starship target prototype will provide data to characterize some of those parameters, like boil-off rates. The transfer tests between two Starships will help characterize how much propellant can be transferred from one spacecraft to another and leaks across the connectors. Similar to the target completion date for the SLS core stage for Artemis 3, this slide only says 2025 for projecting when the test will fly. Those are pretty big air bars for both of those. The beginning of 2025 is only about half a year away. The end of 2025 would put the test less than a year before the current Artemis 3 target launch date. Looking to present day activities, Mr. Shatria said that the next Starship flight test was hoped for by the end of this month, May. He added that production is not the issue for Starship, it's the significant development challenge for all the enabling technology. Somewhat related, NASA Administrator Senator Bill Nelson testified to the House Science Committee on April 30th about the recently released budget request for fiscal 2025, and he was asked about the recent story by Eric Berger for Ars Technica, which a lot of us are talking about. That reported that NASA was studying their options for Artemis 3 in case Starship wasn't ready in 2026. For five minutes. 
uh, Administrator Nelson, it was recently reported that NASA is considering changing the mission profile for Artemis III. The mission scheduled for September of 2026, which is currently intended to land humans on the lunar surface. The potential change in profile would result in a mission where astronauts do not land on the lunar surface, but rather remain in low Earth orbit. Is NASA actively considering an alternative uh, mission profile for Artemis III? What's going on, Mr. Administrator? Mr. Chairman, uh, this is part of our commercial program, and SpaceX is signed up uh, to uh, land in September of 26. Now, that is what is provided in the contract. The article that you're referring to uh, is speculation. Well, what happens if they're not ready? Well, naturally, people think about these things. But the plan is to land. To put a finer point on that, the story is reporting on internal NASA speculation about how the space agency might handle a situation where Starship wasn't ready to go to the moon by then. So NASA is thinking about those things, and I'm sure many of us media folks would be interested in the pros and cons and trade-offs and impacts and that SLS block zero KSP type thingy and so on. So the study lives for another week in public and NASA may continue to kick it around internally, but it's possible that we never hear about it again. Although I said that last week. On Artemis IV, there was not necessarily a lot of details or updates on the status in the slides or the discussion, but there were a few interesting notes. For example, the Gateway initial elements will launch on a Falcon Heavy, which we already knew, but I don't recall any public statement that the co-manifested PPE Halo vehicle will fly on an expendable Falcon Heavy. So not just the center core will be expended, but apparently the side boosters will also be expended too to use up all the propellant in them. Artemis IV is a combination Gateway Assembly and HLS Option B lunar landing mission with Starship HLS. There was a good note in the slide that the halo module structure will go through a static load test in Italy, so that's work still in front of an outfitting integration phase. I have asked the Gateway program for an estimate about when halo will ship here to the U.S. for full internal outfitting. Still waiting for that, but I'll report that information when it's available. In terms of hardware status, most of the Orion and SLS hardware for this mission is still in structural assembly. The exception is ESM-4, which is in integration by prime contractor Airbus at its assembly, integration, and test facility in Bremen, Germany. Mr. Shatria did note that they are hopeful that ESM-4 can meet the goal of shipping from Bremen to KSC one year after ESM-3, which would put that milestone around mid-2025. He also said that all the tooling is ready to start building SLS exploration upper stage articles, although we know from visiting Michoud assembly facility six months ago and following the breadcrumbs since then that the vertical assembly center confidence welds for the EUS liquid hydrogen tank are still forward work, or at least they were the last that we heard. One of the other useful notes was that SLS had gotten through software design for the Block 1B upgrade that will fly Artemis IV. The NASA Marshall Space Flight Center which is the lead center for the SLS program, is also the lead for development of the SLS flight software. The version of the SLS flight software for Block 1B is called Exploration Computer Application Software, or ECAS. ECAS has to fly the full hours-long launch from the autonomous launch sequence that begins 30 seconds before liftoff through core stage burnout and separation from EUS, parking orbit insertion, TLI, spacecraft separation, and EUS disposal. The Block 1 version of the software covered a roughly 15 minute long sequence that only lasted a few minutes past when ICPS separates from the core stage. And then those ULA common avionics on the ICPS take over control of the flight. The other update had to do with Mobile Launcher 2 construction. 
We got a little bit of detail in the briefing and a little bit from this social media post by NASA Kennedy Space and Public Affairs that the base structure is getting close to readiness to be placed on the permanent pedestals at the Launch Complex 39 East Park site, which is on the north side of the VAB. The forecast was for the base to be positioned on temp mounts so that Crawler Transporter 2 could roll in underneath, pick up the base, move it over to the East Park site pedestals, and set it down there. CT2 has been going through some maintenance for the last few months in VAB High Bay 1, but it sounds like that's complete now. Once the ML2 base is set on the permanent pedestals, that will allow pre-assembled sections of the umbilical tower to be brought over from the KSC industrial area and assembled on the base. There was another update posted on social media from NASA KSC Public Affairs on May 6th. The base was lifted up by self-propelled modular transporters, or SPMTs, off its temporary mounts. As this EGS social media post from May 3rd notes, the next phase will be for the base to be jacked up high enough for Crawler Transporter 2 to move in and pick up the base. And then finally, as noted before, the base will end up on the permanent pedestals where it will remain for the rest of major construction. Beyond that, there was some HEO committee deliberation in the public session on April 26th. A couple of points from that are relevant to recent reporting on this channel. First, with respect to a recent video that discussed the new authority that Congress had given to NASA to divide up the exploration top line values, the committee seemed strongly in favor of that. NASA has not said how much they cut from SLS or why, but the SLS top line is typically the highest top line number that Congress appropriates under exploration. The committee noted in the public session that there are risks across the other Artemis slash Moon to Mars programs that NASA wants to try to manage. I noted back in March when the fiscal year 2024 budget was passed that if NASA spent all the way up to the amounts that Congress suggested, that programs like Gateway and Exploration Ground Systems would be squeezed between those amounts and the overall congressional budget cut to Artemis. The committee was in favor of Congress continuing to give NASA that flexibility to divide the funds up within the exploration top line differently than the suggested amounts. Thanks for watching. Hope you thought this video was informative. After a period of relative quiet for the first quarter of 2024, the feed of news and updates from the artist programs or from oversight of the programs has increased recently. We'll be watching to see what milestones are next and when they occur.